Hey everybody, we are live. We got, um, uh, thanks for your patience here. We're just working out a few technical details. I just wanted to uh, welcome, I've got Sam Fiorella and uh, Robert Scoble here. Um, and we are here for some really uh, fun um, uh, debate and I should say a, a good conversation because, um, you know, this is a really heavy topic right now, a, a hot topic, I should say, with what's going on over the last week. Uh, not just with Facebook and Facebook Messenger, um, you know, it's been going on for a long time uh, in, when it com comes to uh, data and privacy. Um, and then um, one thing that really, really uh, sparked an interest, I think, was Sam's uh, article. And Sam, you wrote that article uh, a long time ago. You just happened to get, um, you know, an article that that got re uh, renewed. It got re re uh, re returned uh, back as soon as Messenger actually flipped the switch and, and moved us all onto an app. You outlined in your article, I think, some, um, uh, you know, what, what's basically uh, said in the, um, in, the, in the Facebook Messenger um, uh, rules of engagement in terms of privacy and settings and so on and so forth, which is also really interesting. I want to talk about that. Um, but what was interesting to me is, is that your, your article uh, took off, and I think it got over 5 million views uh, just in the last week. Um, and so obviously there's something to it. People are very interested in this topic. Um, and in, in, in uh, close relation to that, Robert, you've been posting um, all about this on um, Facebook, online, and um, I think all over the place talking about your, um, your position on uh, Facebook Messenger and getting a lot of good conversation around that. Um, so I think why don't we start off with just um, – uh, a general dialogue. Why don't we take uh, uh, Sam? Why don't you go first and just talk a little bit about uh, the article, where that came from, and what your view is of your general view over the Facebook Messenger app. That's the one that he's got there. Although it doesn't look like that anymore. Um, yeah. When I uh, well, oh, at least that's what it looks like now. Yeah, that's what it looks like now. When I wrote the article. Uh, I guess in November of 2013, and it was posted at the beginning of December. And I wrote it in reaction to downloading the Messenger app back then. It, it's you know they're forcing everybody now to move on to it, but it's been available for quite some time in earlier versions. And when I downloaded it on my Android phone, which I love, I love Android, I love the phone. Although this uh, whole thing that this permission setting that KitKat operating system has forced us to do. Uh, got me a little bit nuts. And when I was reading the permissions, I don't know why, I never read permissions. I've been one of those people that blindly accepts whatever terms of service there are, because I've always figured I don't do anything that's that secretive that can't be shared. So I just, for whatever reason, I decided to look and I started reading that it needs uh, access to my, ca to my, uh, my camera which is understandable for an IM app that allows you to share pictures, but it said without your permission. And then I read further and it says it has the, we're, I'm giving the app permission to record my telephone calls without my, without further permission. And I'm giving the phone uh, or the app access to access my camera without my permission. And so that without my permission just started getting me a little bit crazy. And I said, this is getting a little too far, going a little too far. So I wrote the article anyway, the point that I'm trying to make here and to answer your question is I wrote the article to address this point and to start the conversation. I was never one of those people that read the terms. Like I said, I read it, scared the crap out of me, or sorry, the permissions in this case, not the terms, let's be accurate there. Um, and I wanted to uh, see what other people thought and if other people were as nervous about this as I was. So that was uh, December 1st, I think, or December 2nd that it was posted in the Huffington Post. And uh, it went largely unnoticed until, as you said, very recently. And in the last two weeks, it's gone berserk. And everybody's been talking about it. It's been translated into six or seven different languages and uh, really stirred up quite the, uh, the shitstorm. Um, Robert, why don't we um, uh, transition over to you and talk a little bit about um, why do you think it took off the way it did? Why do you think his article um, 
uh, you know, obviously it, it, it really uh, um, hit for home reasons. for a lot of people. It hit home for yourself. So why, why do you think it, that is? For two reasons. One, we are heading into a new age of context where we are going to be studied deeply by the smoke detector in our house, the car we're driving, the phone we're carrying around, the wearable computers we're going to wear, and even uh, 3D sensors like the Microsoft Connect sensor. And this new future freaks people out. Every time I give a speech about my book, uh, a third of the audience raises their hand when I ask, are you freaked out? So there's, uh, uh, so one, this whole new world is freaking people out. And two, Facebook has a lot uh, a deep lack of trust uh, among people because it changes so much. I mean, even uh, in, in the past week, I've seen features pop up that I, you know, didn't know Facebook was all about, right? And there's more coming. <laughs> Uh, and that lack of trust and the fear of this new, always surveilled world we're heading into uh, lit, it was the uh, fuel on the forest fire that uh, Sam's post lit, and it started getting spread around, and um, and Facebook didn't take it seriously enough. They, Facebook should know that an article like this is being passed around and have an answer to it. Uh, faster than anybody else. It's really shocking to me that actually they don't. Yeah, I got to agree with Robert there, Brian. Uh, it is about mistrust. And, you know, Facebook has now come out and, you know, added uh, information on their website. They're reaching out. They reached out to Huffington Post to correct uh, some, uh, some things. They've let us know that they've since this article was originally written that at least on the Android uh, uh, operating system that They've updated their term or, uh, privacy settings or their uh, permission settings, and so we've shared that. They're making a they're making a statement now only because it's become such a big thing. You know, it's not that long ago that we were all talking about their experiment, right? This social experiment that they ran on us. So Facebook has a long history of trust issues and really a long history of communication issues with its audience. And so that inherent uh, mistrust of them um, is, is, I think, really part of the cause here. Yeah. And so here's, what, here's what I'm noticing in talking to audiences about these things, and, and we'll get more into this. Um, we are seeing a new digital divide, not between people who can afford technology and who can't, but be, between people like me who are all in and are going to try everything and give... Uh, a lot of data of these systems. In fact, here's a, a great example of this. I was sitting next to an insurance salesperson from Chicago at a concert the other a, a, a month ago, and he had no idea who I was. And uh, we just started. I just started doing my usual. You know, what kind of apps you got on your Android phone? What, what do you? You know, who are you? What what what's going on? And he's like, Oh, dude, you have to see this Google Now thing. It. And he says, I'm going to give it more data because it helps me live my life. And I like, whoa, <laughs> that's uh, uh, this is an insurance salesperson not from Silicon Valley that is getting the utility out of this new world. Now, what, I just set up a, a new guy's uh, Android phone this week, and within a few minutes, I knew where his what his favorite Google searches were. I knew what his favorite uh, things were on his uh, calendar. I knew. Um, uh, where he had been because Google was studying him on his pass phone. And as soon as he put his uh, password in his email address, it appeared to show him all sorts of stuff. And then Google now started working really well, right? And that's the new world we're heading into. And uh, Sam's article just, uh, people don't know uh, enough about this new world and, and they don't know the utility that's gonna come out, out of this new world, even on Facebook, right? It's the cost of free, right? Which is part of the reason that I wrote the article. Or do we understand that free doesn't mean free? That you know we have to give up some data as a cost to access not only a better user experience on these mobile devices, um, you know, but just access to them. I think it's far deeper than that. I, I, uh, you will get better advertising if you uh, give it data, and that's part of what's going on here. And it's an important part, and we should probably spend a whole hour just talking about 
advertising in this contextual world. Like I just uh, was, I, uh, I said United Airlines sucks because they're, uh, they're, they do. And um, <laughs> I started getting Facebook ads about, from United, right? Now, somebody said, oh, well, that's ad retargeting because you went to the United site and stuff like that. Great, but, <laughs> but we're not uh, seeing great advertising yet off of this new world. But here's an example. I was sitting in a uh, plane, a United Airlines plane, when it comes to t turn out, uh, going home from Chicago. And I have given TripIt access to my Gmail. Now think about that. If we went back in a time machine like to 20 years ago and we were like, you know, in the future, we're going to give access to third party apps to our email to look inside the email and do things. And by the way, Google's doing this too. Google all my Gmail. And so does TripIt. And TripIt looks for plane tickets and things, takes it out of Gmail and puts it into uh, TripIt. But that night warned me two minutes before the pilot did that my flight's being canceled and I had already put my credit card in a trip it. So I just had to click and buy another ticket on another airline out of town. So I got a t I got a flight home. There, it turns out there was only three seats on that flight and there was only one flight. So three minutes later, the, the rest of the plane learned that they're stuck in Chicago. I got out of there. So if you're an all out guy, and you're scared of this new world, you are going to lose at the game of life over and over and over again. And that's what my argument is with Messenger. I answer thousands of messages per, per month, and each one of them takes a little bit less time on Messenger than on texting for, what, for a couple of reasons. And should we go into those reasons, or do you want to uh, stop here? And I do, I do, um, do want to get to that. I do want to um, just real quickly ask you, one question before we move on, um, I had, and this actually plays to a really good question I got posed by um, my friend DJ Waldo earlier today. In terms of what's the worst that could happen with Messenger, with our data? What is it that we're afraid of? What, no, what's that like? Sam, what, what are you afraid of? Because uh, you, you wrote the article, mm -hmm. so you're more keyed in on the fears. Well, yeah, and I think I've, I've received thousands of emails and texts over the course of the last 10, 15, uh, 10 days in particular. And the majority of them are all sharing one big concern. It's not so much that they distrust Facebook, right? Because if Facebook, um, you know, if we, none of us trusted Facebook, none of us would have Facebook. And obviously that's not the case. It's, it's the platform that we all use to communicate with. The problem is, is that once you have a device in your hand, that you've granted free access to access your phone, access your camera, access your contacts. Who's to say that some third party malicious software or even Facebook, if you really don't trust them, can't get access to that, use it as a bridge to take control of your phone, right? So that's the thing, it's happening and it has happened on our computers, right? Where malicious software comes in, it's the fear. It's that A, yeah. we know, Let's forget Facebook for a minute. What else can be done there? But I think there's one more issue that I want to add into this conversation here. And that is that I think most of the uh, social networks, we're picking on Facebook, but it's really just as an example because this messenger thing has blown it up. But this is really the case with all of them. They're being really dismissive of our fears. Uh, they may have a legitimate reason for making a request to access, let's say, our contact list, but they probably have less legitimate reasons. Uh, that uh, you know we're implicitly agreeing to merely by granting them access. You know we should expect that you know for all the reasons that they've stated, they should give us why they're not going to use our data or how they're not going to use our data. And that's one thing that none of them do. So that increases the, the fear. Problems when you're doing software in this new in this new world, and, and it, it's uh, true if you're doing software in the Facebook world or the uh, Android world, and if you're an app company, um, you know what you're going to ask for in the future. So a asking people to sign up for new privacy things every uh, time you try something creates a lot of problems. And uh, a lot of the uh, things that it asked for, it, uh, by the way, Facebook just answered your, your post today ironically enough and sort of went point by point why they're asking for those access and what they're going to do with it where but where did they did they do it directly on the post I'll, 
Did they answer it directly uh, on the post? I saw it on three different um, news articles that were just published in the last couple hours. So I, uh, Facebook uh, has a post somewhere that I, I wish I had right now. I'm sorry. I just got we back. Could, we could tweet out uh, uh, with the, uh, the, the hashtag, Brian, after this. I have it as well. Yeah. And some okay. points have been updated but, on the original post. So, so some of it, and, and here I'm going to use Ryan Papa as a, or I'm going to use uh, Brian because he, he was actually, he's actually listening. So here uh, at the top of Brian's uh, message, I can uh, get information on him and I can also make a phone call right to him. Uh, and I have my phone number as part of Facebook. I, I, my Facebook, my phone number is public. And so if you want to call me from Messenger, you just click on that button and you're calling me. And so it needs access to your uh, uh, contact list uh, and your uh, the information on your profile to make a phone call. And then it needs access to the phone's dialer, which is separate from the app, to make that phone call. So it, it's asked, it needs a lot of permissions just for that one feature, that one little button. And uh, it needs other uh, permissions to send a video, which I do all the time. Messenger. I'm sitting. I just sent one to my friend from the pool. I was taking a video of uh, my kids, and I wanted to send it to somebody in my family. And I use Messenger, and that's another button. So clicking a button it opens up the camera, and there's another feature that lets uh, you send an audio message, which uh, uh, several friends and I do back and forth as well. It's almost like a walkie-talkie where we can just keep going uh, without even t typing on the screen. And that, that's where I was coming from, that Messenger saved so much time over a text message um, because I can do features like this. I can video with each other. I can uh, even I can uh, answer a message just by clicking a button where on text messaging, I have to say thanks or um, great or, you know, or, or OK, even OK is two, three characters, right? OK, uh, return where on Messenger it's one button. So it s saves me uh, a couple clicks on the answering each message. And when you're a guy like me and you answer thousands of messages a month, I start noticing these little cuts because they start adding up to uh, a, a big deal. So let, let's, I, I, can't, I can't argue with the fact that uh, Messenger doesn't have great um, um, features because I, I, I've, I've looked at it and I think that it's, it's got all the right things that I wish that every other app has, and maybe that's uh, a question that we can, you know, discuss well, in, it, in a second. But and by one, the way, the other have... investors have to ask for the same permission. So if you get Snapchat and you want to use Snapchat or or Viber or uh, any or any of the new message messengers, you have to give it the same permission if you want to send uh, video or, or uh, pictures. Right now, you know, if you don't want to send that, then yeah. You can get all your friends on something like uh, this Confide app my son got on, got me on. There's there's something in it, though, that, um, and, you know, Robert Caruso talked about this here in the, in the conversation here on the side about um, trust, and I think we've been touching upon that a little bit, um, you know, and that really plays a lot into, um, you know, uh, the, like the star rating that it's receiving. Messenger app has one, one star um Sam had mentioned that to me earlier about it having one star rating. What what is the tr what is the what is the distance between why we're not using something that's greatly or why we're fighting against something that's greatly featured as you've pointed out and I agree to something that's receiving a one star rating. What what is it that because what's missing like, in between uh, there? Because of a question Kevin Ferlin just asked in the chat. He said, "Why is Robert not scared of his data being used?" And Sam is scared of his data being used, or rather, what is the difference in worst case scenarios, you know, going on? And um, here's the way I look at it: uh, all technologies have potential downsides, and they have potential good things. Driving a car, for instance, I drive a car every day, but a car kills 33, 30,000 people in the United States a year, right? So we're taking an extraordinary. Every day we use that technology, and and uh, we do that risk because of the utility of that technology. Now, it, my wife is Iranian, for instance, and in Iran, there are things you can say that will get you put in jail or killed, 
that won't get me killed or put in jail because I'm a U.S. citizen in the United States and we have different rules about speech than, than an Iraq citizen does. So the downside uh, that if, uh, you know, we wanted to talk about downside, that would be one of them that I would consider deeply, right? If I was a drug dealer, uh, I would be very concerned about how my data is being looked at, right? I would make sure that it's all encrypted and so on and so forth so that the consequences of my conversation with people would be lower than they would be if uh, if they were not encrypted, right? And by the way, the on an Apple phone, the message is encrypted to the server, but it's not encrypted on the server. So there is uh, something that I think Facebook should uh, improve because um, people on the other side can be looking at these messages for a number of different reasons. For instance, if there's a court order that uh, Mark Zuckerberg needs to turn over my uh, messages, um, you know, for instance, if, if somebody did think I was a drug dealer, that court order would be made and he would be able to, the government would be able to look at my messages quite easily. You know, Brian, Sam, what are your I, thoughts? I, um, well, on, on your question regarding, you know, why are they getting such bad reviews yet everybody's downloading them? You know what I mean? It, I think it's a couple of reasons, you know, to the point that everybody wants access, right? And it, you know, there's been some criticism of the app, you know, that it's taking up too, more memory and that, you know, I have to switch between apps and, you know, people just don't like change. I think anytime Facebook does any change, everybody is up in arms. Uh, this one here, because it starts to broach on the privacy issue, um, you know, and what permissions we allow them certainly has amplified it a little bit more. Uh, but I think it's just people are upset that they're being forced to download something when they already had it within without a really good reason from Facebook. And, and again, that goes back to the point that they're really not communicating properly. Um, I know for me. And they and, never have. No, they, they never, never really have. have. And, and uh, one of my favorite lines when I wrote my post bashing you <laughs> uh, was, uh, does anybody uh, remember the Facebook news feed when that came out? There was yeah. a million people who protested that change. And if Mark Zuckerberg had not done that, he would not be a billionaire today. Uh, the reason I use Facebook today is because of the news feed. So the number one feature that I use Facebook for is uh, was put in place, uh, and I remember the days before uh, that news feed came in, and it was just a fun little uh, uh, contact list, right? A little. Yeah, uh, but thing I think what you got to understand though, that it's a little bit different today, though, Robert. I, I don't disagree with you that I complained about that at the time too, and I still use Facebook <laughs> every day, regardless At of the complaints. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, listen, my my, uh, my mo is definitely to play devil's advocate and to always ask the questions, even if they're uncomfortable sometimes. But, you know, yeah. why is it to, to you know, answer uh, Kevin, uh, you know, why is it that I'm more afraid than you are? And, and I think this is sort of the difference between where we are today with the changes that are being made today and the changes that were made, let's say, with the, uh, the news feed. And you touched on it earlier. We are at this crossroads now where technology is allowing us to do so much and it is facilitating the way we read and the speed that we need to communicate and operate that it needs so much access to our personal lives that I think we're at a point where we're almost giving away too much for that access. And the real point of, of writing that article in the first place, besides to ask the question and to alert everybody as of you know, what the, the permissions were, is are you ready at this juncture of, of our development to give away that much data and risk having that data get into the wrong hands? You know, and I think I, people like you and, and I, I that are in this industry are a little bit more willing, but the average person clearly is uh, not. No, I, I, I remember having these exact same arguments when credit cards were just coming on the scene. And people would, privacy advocates would be like, this is evil. Don't use a credit card. The banks are going to have everything you buy. They're going to use it against you or you're going to get better ads. Something like that. Right? Sort of <laughs> the, the discussion we're having today. And when I, when I talk to my audiences, uh, I ask them at the end, how many people don't have a credit card? And there is not a single hand. Usually when I ask uh, who's not on Facebook, there's usually uh, one uh, or four or five to five people who aren't on Facebook yet, but there's not a single hand that goes up. 
So I know we're very willing to trade our privacy to uh, big multinational corporations. And, and by the way, uh, ones that I don't see go of it, at least with Facebook, I know Mark Zuckerberg uh, personally, and I know where he lives, and I know uh, sort of how to find him. <laughs> I know that about the, uh, you know, the, the visa CEO. But uh, yeah, we know we uh, will do things and trade our privacy for utility. And um, that's why I know this world is going to be really messed for a few years as people get used to have drop. Right now I have a drop cam in my front window. And anybody who comes to my front door is captured by Google because Google owns drop cam now. And then if you come in my house, uh, I have a Nest thermostat that has a sensor on it and it knows that I'm home. It, it knows somebody moved by it, right? And really knows that I'm home in, in, in the future. There's a little beacon on my iPhone so it knows that I'm actually in the room. And there's a sensor on my uh, thermostat that does the same thing. And then there's a sensor on my Xbox that's so sensitive it can see my heart rate from across the room just by the color of your screen changing as your heart races think about and then uh, my lights are uh, Philips Hue lights so if I change the color of my lights somebody's studying that and on and on and on right we are going to be in a world I, Mercedes Benz give me a tour around the contextual car where they can tell that you have your kids in the car right through little sensors yeah, but, that are you watching. know what I think you we're being uh we're, 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 all of us are naive if we think that we're not going to be giving up more and more privacy. Uh, it, it's the way things are going. The credit card example is a good uh, is a good one. But I also being naive if we're if we think that the argument of what we were complained about Visa personal data because they now know our shopping history, we're naive if we think that that's related or is similar to what we're giving away today with our smartphones. And the level of, of privacy that we're giving away or the level of data that we're giving away, not only who we talk to, how often we talk to, where we are, where we're physically walking every day. And maybe we'll get to that point where people are just that generally comfortable knowing that the NSA is probably tracking that stuff anyway. I don't know. I but guarantee we will. I guarantee we will for most people in society. I think the, what, what's going to make the difference in terms of how well we transition is how well companies and Facebook is we've already agreed is not very good at this and how well they talk to us and how well they explain this and I think these sorts of things are going to keep bubbling up you know going back to messenger you know we should expect well not just messenger any of them we should expect that all of their reason be clearly stated and explicit when they ask us to provide that permission you know the current yeah. permissions don't do that we should expect yeah. that Facebook will provide will be prohibited using any personal data we give it access to uh, for anything other than the explicit reasons they state they need it for. Yeah, Again, but see, that's the they're not doing any that's of That's a huge problem as a software engineer because I have no idea what I'm going to do with that data tomorrow. I really don't. And there's uh, the right fear now, that people have. I know, but I, uh, I, I think trust is deeper than that between companies um and in, in our book we actually wrote about trust uh we came up with three things and i've talked to the cto of ford and i've talked to oakley and all sorts of uh, different companies about this because all sorts of products are going to have data used to make the product better uh your, your ski goggles right now right i have oakley ski goggles that show uh, where on the mountain you are and how fast you're going how long your hang time of your last month and on and on the product itself is going to change because of the data that's streaming to it and uh, the sensors that are conditions change. Um, and we, we came up with three things. One, are you transparent about what you're collecting on me? And Facebook is not quite, uh, quite there. It, it's not uh, transparent uh, what that data is. For instance, on the newsfeed, I'm pretty sure they're studying every time I click on an article. I'm sure they're studying every time they like or comment or share. Uh, but they're they're now looking at me across the web, right? So they're studying a, a, me at a deep level that most people are not yet aware of. Um, so so one, are you um, are you uh, telling me what you're? Are you transparent about the data you're collecting? Uh, 
has a really nice private dashboard. So Google actually does pretty well on this. Uh, if you Google uh, Google privacy dashboard, you'll find what Google is collecting on you, and it's crazy the amount of data that they're collecting on you. It's, it's, it's pretty crazy. The second thing is, can I correct this data? And, and here's what, where I was going. I live on a golf course, and so a lot of these newer kinds of apps like, like, are competitive to Google Now or, or to a new kind of Siri, for instance, a new assistant. Uh, tell, keep telling me all sorts of stuff about golf. I, I do live on a golf course. The sensor reading is correct. I am on a golf course a lot of time <laughs> because I live on one. But I hate golf, and I don't want to see golf ads. I don't want to see anything about golf. And I can't correct some of these systems and say, stop showing me golf stuff. Facebook is this way with United ad ads right now. I really don't want to see any more anything about United. I, I'm, I'm done with that company. So I don't want to see it. I don't want to be shown an ad about it. I don't want to even see when my friends are praising it. I just don't want to see anything about United. And Facebook is not yet there. And the third thing is, can I remove myself from the consequences of being studied? Um, and here's where I'm going with that. My wife lost 40 pounds with a Fitbit. The Fitbit is a accelerometer on her wrist. It has a clock. Um, and it, there's newer basis watch. I have, actually have a watch right here somewhere. Basis watch has a heart rate sensor and a, and a uh, body temperature sensor and a perspiration sensor. So what does that tell me about uh, when, when I interviewed the CEO of Basis, I said, wait a second, you know when I'm having sex with my wife. And he's like, no, 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 I can't look at the data. And he, he got really defensive, but I hit, uh, we don't yet have control of the consequences of being studied. And it's you scary. Guys, it's scary for at some level. The thing, you, you guys are, are, are obviously very well versed in uh, in this area, but you don't represent, I don't believe, either of you, the, um, the, the average customer. The average customer doesn't read, yeah. and I think Courtney mentioned here, read the TNCs for technology. They don't know yeah. what they're getting themselves into. So what, what can be expected, and that's who we're representing here, that's who this conversation is about, is what can be expected for safeguarding those that aren't uh, reading the teens? I mean, it's heading yeah, we'll into see. a place where. They're... <laughs> and I, I well, and I think you know your wife again has proven that she's infinitely smarter than you, Brian, in asking that question. Um, and the, the, you know, and I disagree with Robert that trust is inherent, uh, or when it comes to big brands, and I think that's. that's decreasing no, I didn't say, every year. I said it's not inherent, but we're heading into a new world where we need a it new, will be. I, I believe we're heading in a new world where we're going to decide on brands based on these three things. Are, are you transparent? Uh, yeah. Well, are, are you correctable? And can I remove myself from the consequences of being studied? Yeah. And actually, I read that in the book and I agree with you there. You know, the fact that so many people are so upset over this messenger migration shows that Facebook as one has used up a lot of what goodwill and trust that they may have built over the years and will have to work that much harder. Um, and, and I think what a lot of people will start to do, I'm hoping as a result of this, at least that's the, the, the reaction that I've received, Brian, is that they will start reading their terms of service. And there's a lot of things that you can do to make uh, uh, apps safer today uh, to some degree. Um, you know, for example, you can decline or turn off the sync feature when you download Messenger. If you don't want Facebook, you know, to grab phone numbers from all your contacts, you can turn off uh, location settings is another one um, that alerts your contacts when, you know, you're in an exact location. Because right now, unless you turn that off, every time you use it, it tells everybody where you are, right? You, you, you might have called in sick and you're texting somebody. <laughs> you're texting your wife, this is where I am, and your boss all of a sudden is going to know where you are. If you, know, if you really don't want to switch to Facebook Messenger, you can just use it in the browser on your phone, and it's the same as if you're using it on your desktop. But there's some really interesting um, things that I want to point out. Stelzner today, and he said you could use it in paper. Anyway, sorry. Paper? No, that's a funny thing, right? Or a phone. Imagine that. No, but you know, there's, there's some other things that I think for, for those people up there that want to sort of have that little bit of extra layer of security, uh, Facebook does do allow you some things, and you know, for example, 
Um, you can change from basic filtering to strict filtering under the who can contact me in the privacy settings. That's one thing people can do. You can control um, uh, who discovers your profile based on your email address or your telephone number. That's another By the way, if you do that, you better look in your other folder. So when you go to the web page, you click on, mess on uh, messages, and it, there's an, uh, another folder where it hides all uh, non-trusted messages and and if you turn on strict you're going to get friends messages from people you probably know that go in there i i actually have mine set to strict because i'm getting spammed to death by a group of people right now and so i needed to, to strict but uh, yeah. you got to look in that other folder I, I bet you have messages in that other folder you, that you have an answer that you that's a good about. point do you guys think that do you guys think this competitive advantage linkedin a Twitter. Oh, it, it already is. It it already is. I, why did Snapchat appear and all of a sudden become a ten billion dollar company? Because Snapchat removed the consequences of sending a message, right? Yep. The, the the on on and Mark uh, Cuban and I have been talking about this. His thing is even more strict. And there's this other app called um, uh, uh, da, 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 Confide which actually is even harder to have consequences because you actually have to mouse over the words and read them. It's harder to take a screenshot or a message you're receiving. There are uh, Snapchat, if I send you a message, you can read it and then it goes, and if you try to sna uh, screenshot your screen, it's supposed to tell me that you screenshot it. So it removes a lot, of the, a lot of the social consequences from sending a message back and forth. But to tell you the truth, most people are just like, when are you coming over tonight? <laughs> you know, there most people just want low friction kinds of messages, and certainly I'm the public face of a public company, and I just want people to be able to message me and say, "Hey, my server's down. Can you fix it?" And I want to take them, take care of them. Um, if if we're going to get into it and and we're going to start doing uh, behaviors that we don't want my wife to see, <laughs> uh, or my boss to see, or I don't want you to, and then then we have to really rethink. Uh, which uh, which of the messengers we're using, and I I, I probably would uh, join Sam that I would if I was in that camp I wouldn't be using Messenger. It's too risky uh, long term. Well, there are there are other things that you can do uh, as well. Like the thing with Snapchat, you know, when I read, you know, Messenger got my ire up, and then I read Snapchat TOS and and permissions and all the others, and they were just just as pervasive, and I and I got rid of some of those as well. And here's another example of what they don't tell you. They tell you that, you know, the message will go away in 10 seconds or 30 seconds or whatever it is if you don't add it to your story. But what they don't tell you is that it's still sitting on their server someplace. You know what I mean? You have now, to really, Cuban, it's hard to find that sort of thing. Mark Cuban's new app called Cyberdust says his yep. messages never touch a server of his. And in fact, uh, on his messages, your name isn't even on the message. So if somebody takes a screenshot, it's really hard to prove that, you know, uh, Tim Cook said that, right? Because you don't actually take a video of it to prove that he uh, uh, sent you that message. And, uh, and there goes your competitive advantage, Brian. Right? right? And that's already a competitive advantage that Cuban has, you know, that Snapchat doesn't. And for me, as one person, I'd rather use his just for that very reason. You know, let me, I want to I wanna throw two or three more tips, if I can, for those people that are really that concerned. Uh, without having to go to third-party software, even within Facebook, you can set up login notifications. Uh, that allows Facebook to send you an alert every time your account is accessed from an on, on computer or device. So I want to give Facebook, I've been shitting on them a lot uh, this last little while, there are some things inherent that if you look for it and you know and you read, you can get at it. And for those of you that don't want to go through that trouble, what I've done, as everybody knows, I use an Android. I'm a huge Android fan. Uh, there's a, a software for Android called Sof uh, Sophos Mobility Security, or Mobile Security, excuse me. Sophos Mobile Security for your Android. Um, and it scans all of your apps for malware uh, when you download them, but it includes a handy privacy advisor, and it's free on Google Play. So even in the situation of somebody else, like one of the fears is that malware taking over one of your apps and then riding on those permissions that you've granted it, software like that will help prevent that. Yeah. Now, keep in mind, uh, so, I use 
A lot of security. Uh, I use two-factor authentication on every zip, and I use really deep long passwords. I never click on a link. If you send me a link, by the way, Esther, I usually don't click it uh, because it's too easy to get fooled by somebody uh, who who got hacked sending me a message saying, "Hey, will you click on this link and check out this new app?" And all of a sudden, I have malware on my computer. So I'm really resistant to this, but most people are not. But people get hacked on like Facebook or Gmail right now. Gmail is being spammed, hacked because people are clicking links and uh, it's opening something up and then sending something out to all their friends. So be careful about clicking links. Stop and, and maybe wait a day and see if uh, that person says, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <You know? laughs> clicking all these links. You know? Let's close out this with the final the question way, here. When, well, this is one reason that I use Messenger because I can have with the person and like why are you sending me this like you know and, and they've been hacked and they, and they say oh i'm sorry i got hacked and uh, all that and all um you know uh you have a choice uh let me a message where i can show it on air you have a choice on whether or not you show uh gps to this specific person i turned mine on and uh we we just had a Conversation about that before the uh, cameras came on. In fact, here's here's this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I said, uh, "Hey, Tim, in uh, Nanuet, New York." <laughs> you said, "Oh shit!" <laughs> but it's right there on the screen, right? Nanuet, New York. <laughs> and um, you can turn that off by a per person. People think about that. I actually Wait. like seeing. Uh, where people are, particularly my close friends, because uh, a lot of my close friends travel as much as I do, and I never know if they're in town. So uh, we're in Africa right now that I know. It's like, hey, Loic, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> no, and other friends are in Hawaii. What are you doing? It's always a fun thing, and it, it, it rarely do they actually say they're in Hawaii. <laughs> you know, it's sort of funny, but... I like that kind of thing. What, what you can't yeah, see because Sam has his locations turned off is that he's actually sitting outside your window. But I, no, I wanted to. Uh, I, I wanted I to. Um, <laughs> if you I can't figure out where I am the, in the world, you're not trying very hard. <laughs> One final question. I just wanted to check with you guys if this is the way that it, go, that it has been. If um, Facebook continues to go along the same path using the same. Of releasing to their tool sets in the way that they have, what do you think will can will then happen? Um, well, here's something I noticed when the Coachella, uh, uh, the Facebook mobile app uses your location to serve you news from where you are, and I started seeing all sorts of news about Coachella when I'm at Coachella, and I asked my wife because friends with the same people. Are you seeing anything from Coachella on your phone or on on your uh, screen? And she's like, no. And I was like, oh, Facebook's using the location data that comes off the GPS on my phone to serve me uh, news that might be interesting to me. In the future, let me tell you what's in. Nobody knows this. I, I give lots of talks on this. Uh, there's a Bluetooth beacon, which uh, the the industry calls iBeacons, but inside my iPhone, there's there's one of these beacons on my key ring. I have a, a uh, another uh, device that does the same thing, so I can find my keys if my kids take them. And this beacon can be turned on. Right now it's not on, but it, when, it, when it's turned on, it can spray three numbers into the air every second. And if you have another device nearby, it can tell how far. Hey, uh, we have a new version of Facebook. It hasn't been released yet, but let's say there was a new one that turned on beacons. Well, it could tell that the three of us are together at a and it could start saying, hey, you don't have yet uh, Sam friended on Facebook. You know, you're obviously friends because you're having dinner with him. We know you're having dinner because you're in a restaurant and you're at the table. <laughs> so, so the algorithm could be like, you know, and add a little a little cool touch to even tell us, hey, you're at, uh, you know, McDonald's right now. Why don't you uh, eat healthier? You know, something like that crazy uh, what it could bring me because of where we are and when we start uh, saying we're going to all this stuff up and you're going to lose some utility. I think Brian from my point there's you know 
Robert has really shown where we're going and, and what the technology is going to allow us to do. And, and I, I don't think there's any turning back from that because regardless of privacy concerns, we want that access, we want that personalization, we want that utility. I think there's a massive opportunity for companies that will compare terms of service, that will compare privacy settings, that will, you know, sort of scan and say, here's, um, uh, you know, here's what you should be worried about. Uh, on the other side, from an app developer perspective, I think there's a huge opportunity for somebody that wants to take that competitive advantage uh, to say, you can opt in or opt out to these three things or these consequences if, if you do. Uh, so I think like a year from now or five, there's imagine five years from now where we're going to be, right? So I think that there's a huge opportunity for those third-party software to step in to do that. Here's the problem. There is a lot of money where I call over the freaky line. And what you're saying is uh, for people who want to stay on the conservative side of the freaky line, there's going to be a business opportunity. Yep. Side of the freaky line. And if you take people over the freaky line, there will be deep utility and everybody's going to join. And so if for a little while, there's a business opportunity right now uh, on, on messengers and on other technologies to uh, appease the uh, all out people, I call them. And, uh, but increasingly, there's going to be people like me who are going to join all in systems uh, over the freaky line systems. And these systems are going to have deep utility. And you're going to have to decide when you join, but you will join. Just like I remember having these arguments when Facebook or Twitter first started coming out. Oh my God, why would you ever write in public about what you're eating for lunch? You know, and why do I want to read what Kevin Rose had for lunch? <laughs> but now we all we do that, like as a as a part of our culture now. True. So the world but Robert, do me a, do me and everybody a favor when you continue to move on that side of the freaky thing. For God's sake, take those glasses and your phone out of the shower, please. <laughs> by the way, that picture, so let's talk about that picture. That picture was shot by my wife, and everybody's seen it. And I told her, do not show any boobies, <laughs> because I knew Facebook algorithm that was looking for boobies and <laughs> would remove that picture from distribution. <laughs> that picture actually shows than you would see if you went to the swimming pool with me, but it so messes with your head. I'm thinking we should change the title of this to Marital Trust. <laughs> oh. Uh, <laughs> maybe it should be, why do we have the taboos we do and are they going to change? Because <laughs> I believe they're going to change. <laughs> and in fact, that's, I, a, good, that's, that's could, a good follow up to me. We could go offline uh, a whole bunch of taboos. Are really shifting deeply in society from gay marriages to uh, smoking weed to uh, all sorts of uh, uh, in the in fact this is my son's bedroom so <laughs> um, but all, all sorts of taboos are about to shift in our society and that's going to be an interesting story over the next decade as well. The, ne the next time well, the three of us are in Vegas together again, that's what we'll do. That's that'll be our debate. Maybe I'm all ready for you. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so Thanks. much. I appreciate it. And everyone out there that's been uh, chatting away, um, really appreciate this, too. We actually have this uh, recorded, so we're going to get a recording uh, up within the next uh, few days, I'm sure, if not sooner. Um, but uh, thank you again. Really appreciate it, Robert, Sam. Just thank you. Up, Matt, Matt says, so should we be worried? You should be worried driving your car because 30,000 people die a year and yet we still do it. And that's why I know you're going to join me because there's a lot of utility taking a little risk on that. Buyer Am beware. Up. Buyer beware. Be careful. You can't complain if you're going to go all in. You're not, you can't complain about your, uh, all of your dirty laundry being aired out there. And I hope DJ Waldo, if he's going to continue talking to us here, has got that thong off and got some clothes back on. <laughs> All righty, guys. Thanks again. Thanks. Bye-bye.